In 7.3, we're going to be dealing with some double angle identities, and these will be identities that will be given on your exam. I do not want you to have to memorize them and commit to memory, but I do want you to be aware of how they work, when we can use them, and maybe when to pull them up. So let's just kind of give you some exposure and practice with them. So when it does come to the exam and you're in that testing situation, you can possibly cue yourself to go, oh, let me use these. So first example is just the solving of a problem. And when would you want to go to a double angle identity? When your trig functions have mixed angles in them. You can see that in sine we have a 2x and cosine we just have a singular x. So if I could use a double angle identity to convert this to a single angle, it would make my solving a little bit easier. So we're going to use this first one here for sine because it's my only option for sine. And then let's see what we can do with it. So I'm going to take 2 cosine of x plus instead of sine 2x, I'm going to say 2 sine x cosine x. And you can see that I had 2 times an alpha, and so it just becomes alpha over here. So that's why I went from a 2x into a singular x equal to 0. Now that I have it set like this, I can see that I have cosines in common. So I'm going to pull that out front. So I have cosine x, parentheses, 2 plus 2 sine x equal to 0. And then now that I have it something times something to give me 0, I can just solve from there. So I'm going to say, okay, well, cosine x, where is it? Equal to 0. And 2 plus 2 sine x, where is it? Equal to 0. So that gives me 2 sine x equal to negative 2 divide by 2, so I'm looking at sine x equal to negative 1. So if again, we're going to go to our good old handy unit circle, where is cosine x 0? Well, that would be when your x is 0 in your ordered pair, so that would be here and here. So this would be where x is equal to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Where is sine x negative 1? Negative 1 is my y value, so that would be where right here, and so that would be at x equal to 3 pi over 2. So my solutions for this, because you can see we have no interval going on there, would be pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, just cycling it through all the periods, and then 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Now we got 3 pi over 2 twice, and so I don't have to write it twice. I could just write it as the first and the second. And so then that gives me all the solutions for this function, and that would be my answer. Let's go into another one and see what we can do with these double angles. And we'll keep referencing that box at the top. Use the following to find sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, and tangent 2 theta. And they have given us cosine theta equal to 3 over 5, where theta is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And so just like we did in the previous chapter, if they give you any kind of restraints or references to quadrants, the first thing you need to do is draw it out. Find where it's at because a lot of you in the last exam missed some of those negatives and those pieces you need it um, just because you didn't recognize the quadrant. So then all your negatives or positives were thrown off. So I know that it is in the quadrant of 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. And so that means we're going to be in this fourth quadrant down here. And then cosine of theta is 3 over pi. If you do your Sokotoa, this means that that is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means my adjacent is 3, my hypotenuse is 5. But because I use that restraint, I know that the part coming down is going to be negative, and this is just a 3, 4, 5. Or do your a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and that will get you there. So if I want to find sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, tangent 2 theta, I would say sine of 2 theta, and then I'm going to use that double angle identity from the top, which is 2 sine theta, cosine theta, and then I'm going to fill it in. So this would be 2 sine of theta, remember, so katoa. So sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, opposite if this is theta. Opposite is negative 4, hypotenuse is 5, so that would be negative 4 over 5. Cosine theta we already know to be 3 over 5. And so now I can output this answer multiplying that all together and I get negative 24 over 5, 25. 
And that was just multiplying across my tops, put this over one, multiply across your bottoms. So using my, what they gave me, I was able to draw a picture. And then I'm looking for sine of two theta. I made the substitution because I know the singular angles. And I was able to output that sine of two theta is equal to negative 24 over 25. Pretty neat. Pretty neat there. Let's do the second one. Let's do cosine of two theta. So if I go up into the top and I grab one of those double angle identities, I'm gonna grab the third one for this one. Two cosine squared theta minus one would be its substitution. And I chose this one because I really don't even have to go back into my triangle on this one. Cosine of theta was given in this problem. And so that would be two cosine theta was three over five. I'm gonna square it minus one. So working through that arithmetic, that gives me what? Two over nine, two times nine over 25 minus one, which would be 18 over 25 multiplying two times nine minus 25 over 25 common denominators. So negative seven over 25. And you need to stick with just your lowest reduced fractions. Don't run and grab any decimals along the way in case they were like those crazy decimals that you would have to round and then you're looking at incorrect answers. Now for tangent two theta, you notice that we didn't do any double angle formulas up above for tangent two theta, but I do know that tangent is equal to two sine sine of two theta over cosine of two theta. So if I take part one, which is negative 24 over 25, and divide it by part two, which is negative seven over 25, and I keep it, change it, flip it, or multiply by its reciprocal, I end up with 24 over seven. So I really didn't need a double angle formula for tangent, but I did have to go back to that handy knowledge of working with sine over cosine. Now there are some other identities that I wanna kind of fill you in on. These are our half angle identities, super fun. Look how great those look. Now again, these in use, I would rather you just reference these angles and be aware of the different ways we can use them. And you're gonna see those as we move forward. Um, but I am not going to make you memorize them. Nobody needs to commit that to memory of the plus or minus the square root of cosine theta plus one over two. But we do have formulas for double angles, also half angles. And then we also have power reduction formulas. And these power reduction formulas in the second half here, those are really nice. And if you're continuing on through these courses and you're working with any other trick functions, being able to take a squared function into a singular function is really going to help you out especially as you move forward into other courses. So I wanted to expose you to these identities. We're going to use these identities. Go in and try the homework. Contact your instructor if you need any assistance along the way.